It's always been our land, will always be our land. No hate, no fear. Immigrants are welcome here. Out of the closet, into the streets. We will not tolerate racism, bigotry, xenophobia, sexism. All across America, minority groups are experiencing a renewed call to action in their fight against oppression and discrimination. Native Americans, women, Muslims, Latinos, and the LGBT community are just some of the many minority groups who share a complex history here in the U.S. The Good Fight, America's ongoing struggle for justice, highlights these groups and their battle for equality over the last century. It's an incredible book. It features a series of nearly 200 photos, 60 embedded videos, and dozens of essays. Rick Smolin co-authored The Good Fight. He is the CEO of Against All Odd Productions here in New York City and is a New York Times bestselling author. He joins us now. Uh, this is the book. I'm just going to hold it up for the camera. It's an incredible book. Yeah. Um, it's got beautiful pictures. It's got uh, just beautiful essays written in it. How did the idea come about? It's interesting, I go to this annual TED conference every year, and I was sitting next to a gentleman named Jonathan Greenblatt, who just took over as the head of the Anti-Defamation League. And, you know, I've been doing these projects for a long time, where we send 100 photographers to Russia or China or America for one day. He said, have you ever thought of, I mean, has anybody ever done a book, with your kind of style of photography and writing and essays, looking at the, the amazingly inspiring history of civil rights, of all the groups that have fought to be treated equally and to have the same opportunities of all Americans over the last hundred years? And I said, you know, I don't think anybody ever has. Wow. So we, we decided that we would do the book, uh, ADL made it possible, and uh, Quite frankly, I was worried that the book would be really depressing. I thought it's going to be oh, this dark history of things that you really wish we did, hadn't done or that we didn't remember. And when you, start, when you, when you ask somebody who's African American or Jewish American or Muslim American or Native American or Latino American or disabled or a woman, would you rather be in 1917 or 2017? When you put it that way, people go, oh, definitely today. <laughs> right. I mean, we have For a sure. long way to go. <laughs> But when you look at the astounding progress and how much has changed since back then, it's, it's, it's inspiring and it's also um, a reminder of what's at, what's at stake right now and, and what our country is fighting. We're trying to not go backwards right now because so much of this progress has been so hard fought by so many people and it's a very inspiring story. Um, this is a pretty hefty book, but frankly, I'm surprised it's not five times this size. I don't and know five how. Five times this price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I guess so. But I don't know how you determine what are the photos you want to choose. The civil rights movement, uh, suffrage. I, I mean, you can go on and on and on. Every we all group, know about these group. iconic moving photos, and you have to whittle them down to like a few pages each. It's like which of your children make it into the life. <laughs> right. that, that really That's is. what it felt like. I mean, there were so many. I mean, we wanted to put some of the classics in here, but we also went to. The the, uh, the the estates of ph photographers who have passed away, who were, whose voices were so important, many of whom photographs were never published. Mm -hmm. So this book is this wonderful mixture of seen images, surprising images, stories you may have heard about, but probably not quite this way. We also were very lucky. Um, I, for example, we did a chapter about a Japanese internment in World War II. Written by George Takai. I had no idea right. that, that Lieutenant Zuru from, yeah, from Star, Star Trek, Trek grew up in an, an internment camp, and his essay is called uh, Barbed Wire for Me Was Home. And what's amazing about the story is here's this family been taken away from their home, taken, taken away from their farm, put in an inter internment camp for two years, and he talks about how patriotic he and his family are, how much they love America. You'd think if you'd been treated that way, you'd be so angry, right? So over and over again, you see this amazing response from people who have not been treated well, who feel unbelievably patriotic. I mean, in some ways, they carry the American spirit more than people that haven't suffered from this kind of abuse. Yeah. It's interesting, um, and that's a great point that, you're, that you make, given the state of play that we are in currently in this country where right. for a lot of people it feels very divided not only did Japanese Americans still feel the the fervent patriotism all through their lives African Americans who were denied their rights fought in every cheered. single know, race, every single war as this country has fought going back to the Revolutionary War to obviously what just happened in Niger African Americans have been at the forefront of that struggle and have continued to offer their patriotism even as their country has sometimes not treated them so well in fact just today in the Washington Post there's an essay about uh, gold star African American moms who have been historically not treated well going back to the first uh, world war. Right. What I loved about this book also, and, and Anne Marie knows this about me, is you have song lyrics that accompany <laughs> some of the essays. And yeah. in one of them, you have uh, Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit, which I encourage our audience, if they're not familiar with that song uh, as sung by Billie Holiday, it is one of the most moving songs 
you'll ever hear, but specifically related to the struggle of African Americans. And, and when, when Strange Fruit was released, it was written by Abe Mirapol, a Jewish guy from the Bronx, of all things, right, mm -hmm. who saw a picture of a hanging, which is so appalled. And uh, at the time that Billie Holiday released this song, you know, this is before the civil rights era. No one sang about lynchings. And a lot of radio stations were reluctant to release it. They said it was a communist plot, that somehow Abe had been paid. And he said, I hate the people that do lynchings. I hate lynchings. And I, I wanted people to hear about this. She made it her signature. She would always close her set yeah. with Strange Fruit. And one of the things that's cool about this book, and I'm a, I'm a tech nerd. I mean, I love technology. So there's an app that comes with the book. It's free. Yeah. It's called The Good right Fight here. App. <laughs> and you simply point your smartphone at 63 different pictures in the book, and when you point at the photograph of Billie Holiday singing in the first integrated nightclub in Harlem, you actually see her singing the song on your phone. Wow. And that's throughout really the cool. book, there's all these really cool little moments like that that kind of marry together and integrate the 600 year old medium of the book together with the internet in a really cool way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I listened to something else, a StoryCorps uh, interview between a father and son, and oh I God. thought that you were playing a little bit. That's a video that goes with it. Yeah. This is also by parent, Upworthy in partnership with Upworthy. If you're a parent, you're going to want to cry when you listen to this. Mm. And, you know, as an author, maybe you would, you would like this. When I was listening to it, it made me ask myself. What sort of conversations am I having with my child? Should I be bringing some of this stuff up? It's sort of everything that's in this book yeah. really sort of, it brought it to life for me. Also, the essay on that page by Matt Johnson, uh, who is a wonderful writer and also uh, was on Fresh Air, he talks about, he said, I, I'm a black father. Every time my children leave the house, I wonder, you know, if they get stopped by a cop, I read all the reports of all the people that have been, uh, you know, abused or mistreated by police. And not to say that all police are bad at all, just to say that sometimes when this happens, he said, I read the headlines, what did they do? What didn't they do? What can I tell my kids? How should they behave? I don't want to see my kids as one of those statistics. Mm -hmm. It's so heartfelt and it goes so well together with the Upworthy piece. Yeah. So these little symbols, I'm going to hold it up to the camera here, these little symbols on the pictures there are how you would use your right. smartphone. It, that just tells you, this is like a fingerprint. This same picture, if you see this picture in a textbook from four years ago, it'll still trigger the, the, the video. So it's, it actually sees this like a, like a fingerprint. It's oh, not, this just cool. tells you that picture has been activated. And if you point to this picture, you see Michelle Obama at the Democratic Convention giving her incredibly inspiring speech. Oh, I love this. this. You know, people talk so about great. publishing is dying, like yeah, books are no, dying. No way, is, not when they're like this. No, wonderful. It's this pretty really amazing. Great. So ultimately, what do you hope your audience, the purchasers of this book, what do you hope they get out of this? Well, first of all, this ought to be a $100 book, and Amazon's offering for $25 right now. And so Whoa. Barnes and Noble, so we're thrilled. Yeah. They, they choose certain books that they want to highlight and feature, so we're, we're just beyond the moon about this. Mm -hmm. um, my hope is, look, we're coming up to the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and, you know, uh, uh, and Hanukkah. Uh, you know, the number one topic right now in America is how do we treat each other? How do we live up to the ideals of our forefathers of America as a place of opportunity and equality where you earn your way mm -hmm. regardless of your background? And I think the stories in this book remind us of how far we've come, how many hard-fought hard battles so many different people have fought to try to... America is such a special place in the world, and I just feel like right now we're, we're, we're seeing something where we could backslide so terribly. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you one other example. Last year, 800 women said they were going to run for office. This year, 11,000 women are running for office. I think a lot of us feel like we can't depend on our politicians to solve the problems, that each of us individually now needs to step up. No superman or superwoman is going to fly in and solve it. I think we've all been very complacent. For the last, for a lot of us for the last 20 years think, well, most of that's solved. We still have some way to, to go. And now suddenly, oh, my God, this could all slide back off the cliff. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good point that you make, Rick. Uh, uh, Senator Jeff Flake, a Republican from Arizona, delivered a speech on the floor of the Senate yesterday, which yeah. many people are saying will someday be in a book like this. Oh, I, uh, that was an amazing speech. Uh, the, the that standing. is one for the history books. Uh, it is also true that for many, many years, Americans have not been asked to sacrifice in mm -hmm. the way that perhaps our forefathers, our ancestors did. Mm -hmm. uh, that in the last 20 or 30 years, things have been pretty good. You ask the question, would you rather be in 1917 or 2017? <laughs> Even marginalized groups will say, this is a better time to be an American, to live in the United States of America. On the other hand, we've been rarely asked by our leaders to sacrifice the way that our grandparents did, the way that the folks that came. I mean, the idea of a, I'm, I'm holding up this picture again of Muhammad Ali uh, with these young children here. Um, the idea of the heavyweight champion of the world, who in this day and age would be worth millions of dollars, mm -hmm. giving up his title, 
because of his belief, beliefs, right? Whether they're right or wrong, whether you agree or disagree with his beliefs, he gave up his title because he did. He believed fervently in his religious beliefs, and I don't think you'd see that today. Well, and, I feel like I Kaepernick has done the same thing. I mean, he could have just said, you know, I've got a lot of money. I'm going to just, you know, take care of myself. Yeah, Colin to, Kaepernick to, is a good to, point. Yeah, to yeah. risk your career and your reputation for something bigger than you, to me, is the ultimate act of patriotism. There's two pictures in the book that I thought maybe I'd just point out for one second before we, uh, you know, say goodbye, which is um, there's two pictures in the book that, to me, talk about how hatred or love and respect are passed on from one generation to the next. There's this really chilling picture of a Ku Klux Klan grandmother in her white hood kissing her six-month-old granddaughter. And you just, you know, wow. you feel the hatred being passed on. Children are not born hating right. anything. Yeah. If you ever see kids of different races playing together, they're, they're colorblind, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, I'm sorry, and then it, it's, it's an amazing. It's also a reminder that it, people are not all one thing. No, yeah. right? You know, I and mean. Then, she can hate, and she clearly she can, can love. Can love right. her, her and, and then the second picture is uh, a Muslim American with his daughter on his shoulders and a Jewish American man with his son on his shoulders at the Chicago airport protesting Trump's ban, the, the first of the three bans that have all been stopped by the courts. And the fact that you've got Muslims and Jews together that this has brought people together in a way, and in a way, I keep thinking, I keep hoping that maybe what Trump is is the, you know, the irritant and the oyster that creates the pearl. Maybe it's waking us all up. This idea of woke, like a lot of us are waking up now, and realizing right. we have to individually uh, take responsibility for what's right. happening. And I think right that's now. happening on both sides yeah. of the political spectrum. For Absolutely. Sure. Uh, Rick Smolin, thank you so much. Thank great you. book. Great to be it here. It is a great thank book, and, and we should point out that in that picture of Muhammad Ali with the little boy, there is a picture of Colin Kaepernick right in the paper. <laughs> there so you he, go. he is yes. in there. Yeah.